One who is likely to run for president, but first may need to reconsider some of his statements. The group that may indeed make or break any Republican candidate for 2016. And the search for a victim at the University of Virginia mixes with the search for some truth. Intermission's done. Second half of the arena is now open for business. First up, she writes for the National Review as a fellow for the Franklin Center and as a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Forum. Jillian Melchior joins us and the author of Hand to Mouth, Living in Bootstrap America and political commentator. Pleasure to welcome back Linda Toronto. Ladies, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, let's get to it. See, we have a good panel here this morning because we got the ladies who can then set us straight. That's what we needed here today. Let's get started with Ben Carson in his GQ profile. He has not yet said that he's going to run for president, yet he makes this statement. His business manager, Armstrong Williams, notes how President Obama looked clean and elegant during a recent speech. Carson grumbled, and this is according to Esquire, or GQ rather, like most psychopaths. That's why they're successful. That's why they look. They all look great. Ben Carson is basically just called in a GQ interview, is called the president a psychopath. Linda, the, the man recently hired somebody to help him protect himself from himself. He's not taking the real advice then, is he? I think he probably needs to hire two or three more people with that job. And and look, I have sympathy for him. Everybody has said something uh, that maybe they wished they could have contextualized. Um, however, the word psychopath is really strong. Uh, so it, it, it'll be interesting to see how he comes back from this. All right, but we do have to admit, though, that this is not, I mean, many people still are a devotee. And I have to tell you, I've interviewed Dr. Carson. I find him to be an absolutely brilliant doctor. Uh, he certainly is a man of conviction, and he certainly has his own ideas. But isn't it true, and again, I'll throw this one to you, Jillian, people want, mm -hmm. people want trustworthiness. Does, does America really want people calling the guy who's in office right now a psychopath? No, I don't think they do. I mean, Ben Carson's a brilliant man, but some brilliant people just don't need to be politicians. And I think this isn't the first time that he's put his foot in his mouth. I mean, you know, just a couple weeks ago we were talking about whether or not prison can turn you gay as well. Another Ben Carson quote. So, I mean, I, I have great respect for the man as a doctor. Maybe he shouldn't be a politician. Uh, and I would think that you could probably say that about a lot of people who are basically running for offices Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, there's, there's going to be a few more out there as well. <laughs> uh, let me, so let me stay with you on this when we get down to the president, or at least the presidential candidate who's out there right now. Ted Cruz says mm -hmm. he's got to sign up for Obamacare. Is that a mistake or is that a great political ploy, Jillian? Oh, I think that's going to be interesting to watch that play out. I mean, I, it is basically what the rest of the country is saying that we have to do now. It's been something that's been imposed on taxpayers. And, you know, maybe it's an important strategic uh, perspective for him to have to go through it as well. Linda, if you think about it, that actually might be a pretty smart move on his part, because can't he now go to people and say, I've experienced this and here's what I found? Everybody in America who can get insurance with a pre-existing condition has already experienced Obamacare. The fact that he's signing up for an exchange is, is not frankly news except for in his own personal health choices for his family. Now on the other hand, this is a dude that's been on government health insurance for quite a long time so I'm not sure the switch is going to play as well as, as they're hoping. Do you think though that this is going to be something that will hurt him with those who want to vote for him when he has talked so vociferously against Obamacare and now he has signed up for it obviously he could pay the penalty he has the money to get his own insurance so don't you think Linda that people are going to look at this with somewhat of an askance eye um, I think if it's anything more than a publicity stunt, it's a really bad idea. If it's a publicity stunt, I think you're right, it doesn't go well. Um, it doesn't play into any of the narratives that he's trying to put. But more importantly, we're talking about Ted Cruz as though he's this candidate when his hat's first in the ring and, and his first couple of PR moves have been kind of uh, messy, we'll say. So I, I think to even worry at this point about whether or not he's going to be able to play it properly is giving him maybe more credit than he's proven he should get already. Jillian, is that maybe part of it here? i got about 40 seconds before we take a break, but people are looking at him. And again, you have to respect the man for his ability to speak and some of the things that he has pushed forward here. But is he in reality to the people who would vote an honest candidate or is he maybe looking for something else down the road? You know, I think he doesn't have a lot to lose from running right now because, you know, he either wins or this is something that builds his brand. And Ted Cruz is very much about Ted Cruz's brand. 
you know, I think uh, regardless of the outcome, he's going to come out a winner. See, there you go. It is all about that political brand, no matter how we slice it, ladies. I think we got it right there. You have to push the brand forward, and this is going to be at least the beginning for Ted Cruz. Jillian Melchior and Linda Toronto, please stand by. We're going to come back, take a break. And when we do come back, we need to talk a little bit about that one group that people are now going after, the evangelicals, plus also some news and some discussion about the UVA rape investigation. The arena continues to be open for business when we continue right here on Midpoint. Back to business in the arena. Welcome back, writer for the National Review. As a fellow for the Franklin Center and Independent Women's Forum, Jillian Melchior, and the author of Hand to Mouth, Living in Bootstrap America, and political commentator, Linda Tirado. Ladies, let's go ahead and get restarted again. We are told by some people right. that we have politicians who must get the evangelical vote. Obviously, Ted Cruz is going after the evangelicals. He did that at Liberty University. Mm -hmm. Rand Paul now indicating that he wants to get there. Linda, I'm going to start with you this time. There are some people who say that you cannot win unless you have the evangelical vote. Others say that that is actually a hindrance when you are going up against the rest of America. What do you think? Is this something that you must have? And are some people basically sort of underestimating, though, the power of the evangelical vote? I think it's better phrased as they're a group you can't afford to have against you. Clearly, we've had people win without most of the evangelical block, um, but we've never had anybody win where evangelicals came out in full-throated non-support with a no-confidence vote. So I think it's, it's really more a matter of making sure that everybody feels like they don't uh, have a from you, which which Ted Cruz is largely signaling, obviously, but you also see it in a lot more subtle ways, where you, you get people talking about values and things like that, even on the left. Hillary Clinton right now is kind of making a bit of a play for evangelicals, and I almost wonder if it's just to annoy Ted Cruz. I hope it is. <laughs> Wait a minute, now you bring up an actual good point here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay with you on this. Do you think that's, well, that obviously has to be part of the whole political process here, because there's going to be those who will look to aggravate and annoy the other side as much as they can. It actually is a pretty even-handed political ploy, is it not? Um, I mean, as far as politics is, I'd say it's clean ball. Uh, but if we're looking to the Clintons to not try and corner every market that they see anybody else coming close to having, um, we're in for a long wait. So. so how do you go on that, Jillian Melchior? Let me throw it to you now, because, again, we come down to the evangelical, uh, evangelical issue. Obviously, they are proud people. Mm -hmm. They are devoted. They are voters, and they show up at the poll. Can you win without them? Uh, you know, I think it's going to be really interesting to watch how this plays out because they are on social issues in particular further right than I think most of the country. What I'm fascinated to watch is how, you know, Republicans are trying to cobble together a constituency when you've got a Republican Party that's very divided. On one hand, you've got libertarians. On the other hand, you've got evangelical social conservatives. These are some real different viewpoints. And I think what's been interesting with Rand Paul in particular is seeing him court evangelicals and make the argument that, you know, in order to have a truly functioning libertarian society, you need virtuous individuals, and maybe that maybe that comes from an evangelical perspective. All right, I got about 90 seconds left here before we take a break. Come back for the final here. Bill Cosby, his accusers are continuing to go after him in court battles right now. They're claiming, they're fighting his effort to have their defamation lawsuit dismissed, and his far from finished tour continues across America. About the minute I have left, Jillian, I'll stay with you for about 30, 40 seconds on this. Are you insulted by the fact that Bill Cosby is still on tour? You know, I, I think you've got to say he's innocent until proven guilty. Um, there are some, there's some weight to those allegations, but, you know, he's going to do what he's going to do. Okay, so... I'm going to say I'm not going to buy a ticket, but he's going to have to pay legal fees somehow. Well, but does he insult, is it insulting to you, though? Because there are some people who say, first of all, Linda, that he should, not be a, he should not be on tour. The people need to cancel the tour because of the widespread allegations that are here, that he's basically just spitting back in the face of his accusers. What? I mean, I think that, that, that anybody who's accused of doing... Consumers. Okay, go ahead, Linda. I think anybody that's accused of doing what he's been accused of as many times as he's been accused of isn't the type of man that's really worried about the morality of how his accusers feel about him still being on tour. I mean, is it offensive? Sure, in theory. So is rape. So, you know, innocent until proven guilty is key. All right. Uh, last word on this, uh, Jillian. You're not insulted then by the fact that he continues his tour. 
I'm not personally insulted. I don't know Bill Cosby. I think a lot of consumers will, you know, they're looking for somebody who's wholesome, and Bill Cosby's maybe maybe not who they thought he was. So I'm, I'll be interested to see how consumers respond to this tour. It will be interested indeed. Ladies, that's going to be it for the arena today. I want to thank you both, Jillian Melchior in New York, Linda Toronto. Thank I thank you. you for your time. We're going to have you back again. We're going to continue a lot more. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. Sure, thanks. thanks. All right, I want to remind everybody that this is what we do here on Midpoint now. The arena is open for business daily with a little bit more than just the standard conversation. Stay with us. Midpoint, where we question everything, continues right after this.